every time you hear the word church is not referring to a physical building it's referring to the people that make up the group the mercy of god is not just about forgiveness of sins the mercy of god allows things to work for a person blind Bartimaeus cried out to jesus and said son of david have mercy on me when he says is the lift of your head he can use anyone to help you when situations may look bleak hold them to go thank you god bless you for that we give god the glory hallelujah Amen. to him alone be the glory to him alone be the glory to him alone be to him alone be to him alone be hallelujah amen. amen today i want to talk to us as our prayer service and uh, we're going to look at some very, very cogent things and important things that is paramount to us as children of God so that we can perfectly understand the will, and the, fa the will of God for us. Because as children of God, there are certain things that God expects of us. And God, in his infinite mercy, will take us to the very place he has for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew 20, verses 26 to 28. Matthew 20, verses 26 to 28. It is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you, shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be willing, shall be your willing, go back to it, shall be your willing and humble slave. We can't, don't, I don't want you to rush. Go back. <laughs> and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your willing and humble slave. Then the last verse. Just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, or but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, paying the price to set them free from the penalty of sin. Matthew 16, verses 24 to 27. Matthew 16, verses 24 to 27. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interest, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. That person must express the willingness to endure whatever may come. Not that they will go through it, but he must be willing. In his heart, he must have made up his mind that come what may, I'm serving God. And follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. Now, he said, following me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living. The example, don't profess Christianity without living a Christian life. Hallelujah. And that Christian life, that example that we're conforming to in the life of Jesus, if need be, there may be times that we will suffer for him and perhaps dying because of faith in me. Some people will be martyred. That is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. And whoever loses his life in this world for my sake will find it that is life with me for all eternity. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, but forfeits his soul? Now, I want you to take note of this. He said, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, but forfeits 
his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Hallelujah. And the last verse here, for the Son of Man is going to come in the glory and majesty of his Father with his angels, and then he will repay each one in accordance with what he has done. God bless the reading of his word. Today I want to talk to us about paying the price for greatness. Paying the price for greatness. Because these verses that we read, there's so many things in those verses that we can unpack and, you know, but you need to understand that the way the world defines greatness is not the way of the Bible. And I see so many things, even among ministers, myself, when we gather and we discuss and we look at things, many times what they are seeing as greatness is not what the Bible sees as greatness. You can be the pastor in your home, hallelujah, of four people, and you pastor them well and pastor them to heaven. And you can be a pastor of millions or thousands, and none of them will make it. You may say, how is that possible, Pastor? It's possible. Because Isaiah 9, 16, is when the leader makes everybody go astray. He didn't say how many people. One man can make millions go astray. How do I know? Hitler is an example. North Korea, the leader is still there. He's God in North Korea. So if the North Korean president is telling everybody in his country that he's God and they must bow to him, that there's no other religion but their own religion, that man will make millions go to hell. Hallelujah. And you'll be wondering, but why is God not doing anything? He is doing what he can do. And he has done what he needs to do. There are people going into North Korea knowing that they may never come out. Just for them to go and tell people that Jesus is Lord. There's nothing that catches God by surprise. He's the Almighty. Nothing catches him by surprise. So when we're talking about paying the price for greatness, there's a price to pay when it comes to your destiny. Every time I realize that every price to pay, there's a progression. When you look at the life of Joseph, the first thing God gave Joseph was what? A dream. Every price you need to pay, God will give you a dream first. Hallelujah. Now, from that dream, sometimes you will discover what you need to pay. Other times, he won't tell you what you will go through. Hallelujah. Who would have told Joseph? On the day the, the father told him, go and check on the welfare of your brothers, whether they are all right. That that's the day they will capture him. That day he will tell his father, Dad, I love you with all my heart, but this mission, <laughs> this one you're asking me to go, no way. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you will discover the price to pay. And every time you discover the price to pay, you will also need to decide whether or not you pay that price. Nothing is free in this life. Don't let anybody deceive you. <laughs> There's no free lunch anywhere, even in Christianity. Jesus has paid the ultimate price, and he won't pay it again for anybody. So whether or not you make use of what he has done is left to you. Hallelujah. It's only in Christianity that I see we pray prayers like, let me do little work and plenty money. That's satanic. The God that worked six days nonstop and rested only one day. If he was that lazy, he would have just stayed on the first day and do everything he needs to do and said, God rested for six days. Then he's telling us that just work a little, enjoy the rest. Hallelujah. Walked six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. That's the God we serve. Hallelujah. When you look at things in the world, there are so many examples we see. People that are, are, that, that they are doing things in their you know, 
endeavors, in their livelihood, in their sporting activities. They stand out. Why? Because they've paid the price for it. Hallelujah. Many of us as Christians, we're like, you know, those that cheat. That cheat on the, you know, using uh, the drugs to be faster when they are running. And they will catch them. They are, they are doping. Hallelujah. So as, as Christians, our job to pay the price for greatness starts with you making up your mind to do so. So there are conditions to meet, there are costs to bear, there are requirements and qualifications that must be satisfied in winning any great prize. Similarly, the race to fulfill destiny is not without the price to pay. Hallelujah. Nothing comes cheap in this kingdom. You better know now. Nothing comes cheap in the kingdom of God. If people have to, you know, I, I remember back in the days, we'll go out to do evangelism and we'll be telling people, once you come to Jesus, all your problems are solved. Come, it will sort you out. Come, everything, palm, it will go. Hallelujah. God can heal you of sickness, but you have to pray and maintain that health. Because the enemy that attacked you first is coming back again. The Bible says it. It said when you cast out a demon, they will come. That demon is coming to check whether this place is still empty. And if it's empty, it's going back to bring seven more. So there are eight now. Before, that demon was using one way. Now there are eight ways that he's trying to enter your house. Hallelujah. There's a glorious future for you and I. But we must be willing to pay the price for greatness. Because whatever you are willing to have, you must be willing to pay for it. Whatever you desire in this world, know now that you must be willing to pay for it. Because nobody in this world can realize their dream in life unless they commit to what it takes to get it to achievement. And it may include discipline, diligence, determination, self-development, self-denial. Sometimes there will be physical pains. I'm telling you. And sometimes it may even cost you financially. Whenever we are talking about greatness, greatness you can never remove the law of sacrifice. You can't. Every great person in the scripture sacrifice something. Sacrifice something. When God told Abraham, go and kill your only son. <laughs> the one he has been waiting for for how many years? But there was willingness in his heart. That was what God wanted. Are you willing to let go, to sacrifice this thing that you love? Because if you don't sow, you can never reap. And many times, whatever we sow is proportional to what we will reap. Because if you want a great price, be ready to sow and pay big. Hallelujah. Psalm 126 verse 5 to 6. Psalm 126 verse 5 to 6. Said, they who sow in tears shall reap with joyful singing. He who goes back and forth, weeping, carrying his bag of seed for planting, will indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 18. Romans 8, 18. For I consider from the standpoint of faith, for I consider from the Romans 8, 18. For I consider from the standpoint of faith, that the sufferings of this present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. There's a price to pay. When you look at, we read a lot about Apostle Paul, but that man paid a great price. Ah! Apostle Paul, he paid a great price. All because we are reading him today. But when he was doing those things, he doesn't even know whether you and I will read it. But he made up his mind that come what may, I will pay the price for it. 
That's why they were telling him, don't go to Jerusalem. They are going to kill you. He said, you are breaking my heart. We're talking about paying the price. You are telling me to run away from me. No, I will pay the price. He said, I'm not only ready to be bound. I'm ready to be killed for the sake of the cross. Hallelujah. Many of us, if it's, when it comes to worldly things, we're ready to pay any price. Amen? Some of us, they even tell us, uh, we binge watch. We can watch one episode to the other, to the other, and before we know it, we spend five hours watching a movie. Hallelujah. I used to love movies, though. Don't get me wrong. Ah, <laughs> me and Chinese. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> hey, my wife knows. I know their names. Yeah? I like it. That's action. Hey, Kai, yeah, yeah. Ip Man, oh, I love it. <laughs> but one day, God asked me a question. Say, how many hours have you watched a movie today? I think I, I said, I calculated it. I said, okay, multiply that thing by so so amount of days. Yes. By the time I now saw them, I said, imagine you spend the next 40 years. What would I equate to? I said, 10 years of my life would have been on movies. That was what killed it for me. I still watch once in a while, but nothing ties me down. And I do it intentionally. If we're watching a two-hour movie, my wife and I, we can watch one hour and break. I won't give something. It's not, I'm not talking about a Christian movie now that is blessing my soul. I'm talking about all this just entertainment. How can I entertain myself for one hour? But I cannot be in the presence of God for more than that. That's slavery. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when it comes to investing in the kingdom of God, there's great profit, but you must work for it. The returns in the investing in God's kingdom is far greater than any worldly investment can give you. Mark 10, verse 20, 29 to 30. Mark 10, verse 29 to 30. Jesus said, I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, there's no one, no one, this is a great statement, there's no one who has given up a house or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or farms, for my sake, and for the gospel's sake, we will not receive a hundred times as much now in the present age. Houses, and brothers, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and farms, along with what? Persecution. That's where we miss it. And in the age to come, eternal life. When you stand for the greatness of God in this world, according to the dictates of the Bible, guess what? It will come with persecution, but there's great reward. Because set aside personal pleasure. Set aside as Christians. We are called to be great in this kingdom. But I see a lot of Christians and I'm wondering, what is going on, Lord? Why is this wrong? Many people are not ready to suffer for God. And you want him to suffer for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, greatness does not come without a cost. Hallelujah. And as Christians, please, redefine greatness in your heart. Greatness is not the way the world sees it. The greatness of God, he said, the servant of all, the one that is ready to serve others, is the greatest. So when I'm getting rich, I'm getting rich because I want to be a blessing. Not because I want to be in comfort. Make up your mind. <laughs> your, your wealth, your everything, you're saying, God, what next? Who can we be a blessing to? Hallelujah. Because the way the world values things, I told you in that Matthew 16, or 20, the, the one who first read, it says success, fame, those are the things people are after. In the kingdom of God, that's not what we're after. When the, when the disciples, the mother of John and, and his brother came to Jesus and said, let these two people sit beside you. All she was thinking of, let them be great. Ah, Jesus said, you want 
John and his brother to sit next to me? He said, first of all, that, does, that decision is not mine. But second of all, can they drink? <laughs> He's saying, can, you, can they pay that cost? They were quick. They said, yeah, we will pay it. It was the first person that they killed. <laughs> and after Jesus, go and read it. They beheaded him straight. It was quick. Ah, we will pay it. John, they tried every possible best to kill him. But that one, for some reason, <laughs> and boiled him in hot water. Did every, after this one, you, you, are, you, are, you are strange. You are strange. So they cast him to the island of Patmos. Go and die there. Grow old and die there. We don't want to see you. Because this one, the way you are, we can't kill you. If we leave you in the city, you will turn the city upside down. Hallelujah. There's a price to pay. Don't forget that. There's a price to do what? To pay. There's a price to pay. See, one of the ways you understand this price to pay. If you want to buy a shoe, for instance, you go into the shop. You see the shoe that you like. You like that shoe. You know, the, the lights are shining on it. Everything is perfect. It's that maroon color. Ah, you've been already, in your mind, you're already thinking, by the time I step into that shoe, ah, that, this Sunday they will agree. <laughs> eh? <laughs> you now carry the shoe. Well, where would you check the price? You check inside. The moment you just turn it off and you say 400 and something pounds. As much as you desire it, you don't have the power to pay for it. Sometimes we desire great things, but we don't have the power to pay for it. We don't have the means of paying for it. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? There's a price to pay for that thing that you desire. It doesn't come cheap. And the truth is, shoes that are useless... The truth is, even you, when you see it, you will know. You don't know it, that one. Maybe it won't be more than... <laughs> you don't even go there. Why? Because there's something in us, inbuilt in us, that we know what is of value. So don't let anybody deceive you. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. Let me give you some foundational truth when it comes to paying the price for greatness. Number one, Greatness requires sacrifice. Don't let anyone deceive you. Sacrifice is necessary for greatness. Matthew 16, that Matthew 16, 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone, this one is a choice. If anyone is not making it compulsory, it's not a command. He's not saying all disciples must do it. He's telling his disciples, if anyone wishes to follow me <laughs> as my disciple, you must deny him. He must deny himself. Set aside every uh, selfish interest. Because God knows we have it. Ah, we love it. We have it. Selfish interest. And take up the cross. Expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. And follow me. Believing in me. Conforming to my examples. Because those are ways that we can pay that price. So greatness requires sacrifice. Because just as Jesus sacrificed his love for us on the cross for the salvation of humanity. We also must be willing to sacrifice our own desires and comfort. For the sake of serving God and others in his kingdom. God will not exalt anyone that is not invested in the kingdom of God. Nobody. That's why many, sometimes people are admiring, you know, great men of God that have sown so much. <laughs> you better go and hear their story. And know that behind every uh, glory you are saying there's a story. It's not coming cheap. I was hearing a man of God recently was talking about one of our father and the Lord's son, Prophet El Buba, and he was saying, 
how can Baba, almost 82, it was this year, I was telling somebody, say, how can Baba of almost 82 years still be praying seven hours every day? He said, every time he thinks of it, he goes like, what am I doing? I'm not even up to something. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus sacrificed his life, we are also called to a life of sacrifice. Sacrifice can come in form of giving up your time, giving up your resources, and even your relationships that may hinder your work with God. No friend can be greater than Christ in your life. If that friend is not of God, you better run away. If that friend will not bring you closer to God, that is the first sacrifice you need to pay. Cut it off. Hallelujah. Remember that Matthew 20 said, it's, you know, the first among you shall be your willing and humble slave. Greatness comes out of the price. Sacrifice. Number two, greatness requires hard work. Requires what? Hard work. When you see a farmer, farmers are, are hardworking people. <laughs> the one that wants harvest. <laughs> They are hardworking people. With all the technological advancement that they have for farmers now, they still work tirelessly, working hard to make sure that they get a bountiful harvest. Hallelujah. So like a farmer, we as well, we have to tend our crops. We have to put in the effort. We have to work hard to grow spiritually and to grow in the things of God. I cannot overemphasize this. God is looking for those that will stand for him in this end time. Not, what I'm talking about is not that you become a pastor or anything. No. But in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, your work is being spoken about for what you do for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to be diligent in the face of challenges and setbacks. When we are hardworking, we don't let things that happen to us deter us. Because when we, when we face challenges, what we do is a yardstick to what your faith is with God. It shows clearly whether you've put your faith in God, you put your trust in God for your life. Because we must consistently seek God in prayer, studying his word, serving others, demonstrating our dedication to growing in greatness in God's kingdom. Number three, greatness requires humility. Greatness requires what? Humility. James chapter 4 verse 10. James 4 10. Humble yourselves. With an attitude of repentance and insignificance in the presence of the Lord. And He will do what? He will exalt you. He will lift you up. He will give you purpose. When you are somebody that wants to be great in His kingdom, you must be humble. So that when He lifts you, you are not proud. And a lot of these things start in your heart. The Bible says God weighs the heart, the motive. He wants to know why you are doing things. If he says that you want to be great to show your neighbor, you will remain where you are. Yeah. Because before you know it, you can even slap your neighbor when money comes. And many times you don't know the true nature of somebody until there's a problem. Hallelujah. It's like pressure cooker. Problems are like pressure cooker. When they boil you to a point, you now decide how you react. Everybody's gentle, though. Every, even me, I'm gentle. Am I not? <laughs> Everybody's gentle until there's problem. Hallelujah. That, that's when we now know your true colors. Hallelujah. I've seen it before. You know, sometimes when they do... When there's fire, 
in the office building. All of them, they've been working like this, coming into work. Let the fire alarm sound. And, they know it, and they're telling them, this is not a drill. <laughs> you see everybody scattering there. <laughs> Hallelujah. When there's a problem, we'll know the true nature of who you are. Because we need to be humble because true greatness is not found in when you exalt yourself. But it's found in when God lifts you high. Number four, greatness requires obedience to God. John 14 verse 15, greatness requires obedience to who? To God. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. Because like soldiers that obey God's command or soldiers that obey the command of their masters, Christians, those that want to be great, must obey God's word in order to achieve greatness in his kingdom. You must be a soldier for Christ. Truly follow the others of Christ without question. Obey God's truth. Obey the principles of God so that your life of righteousness and blessing in his kingdom can begin to manifest. When the Bible says the love of many will wax cold in the, in, in the end time, it, sometimes these things are not... Uh, it's not talking about the devil coming with big sin and everybody knows that sin, they will run. No. It will come with subtle things that will just take your time. You go out on a Sunday morning like this, you see a lot of people jogging, doing so many things. These are just creative. They will tell children, oh, matches are only Saturday and Sunday. Why only Saturday and Sunday? Hallelujah. Everything is orchestrated. While you are sitting here, you don't have control of so many things. There are people deciding things that will happen in this nation. Hallelujah. There are people deciding. And most times, if they want to do it, they don't even care what you and I think. Home office is a classic example. They don't care. Whether you are going through a tough time or not, where the nation is tough, everything, money is scarce, and they are increasing prices of things. Well, they don't care. Somebody is sitting in that office deciding that, well, we had 2 million applications last year. We want to reduce it to 1 million. My people are overworked. <laughs> so jack up the prices. But you and I are complaining, ah, you want to do this now, it's X amount, four of you, X amount of money. They don't care. Because we need to be great by obeying God. Hallelujah. Number five. Greatness requires perseverance. Because it's one thing to be sacrificial, it's wanting to be hardworking, it's wanting to be humble, it's wanting to obey God. But greatness requires perseverance. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 4. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 4. And not only this, but with joy, let us exalt in our sufferings <laughs> and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble, they produces Patient endurance. They are there for a reason. And endurance, proven character. Proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. What you are running away from, God's word is saying, there is a reason why you must allow it to work on you. Do not run away from it. Because the way gold is refined in intense heat and pressure and fire, <laughs> hey, God refines us too through trials and hardship. And the purpose of it is to lead us to greater level of greatness. What you go through and overcome, you, are, you become an influence over that thing. If you've gone through some challenges in terms of sickness or anything and God sees you through, when you are talking to somebody or praying for somebody, you are praying with authority. Why? Because that thing listened to you through God when you were addressing it. 
If he has come, if you have overcome that thing over your life, you can stand with authority and say, in the name of Jesus. You didn't conquer me, demon. Get out! Why? Because I have authority. I overcame him. Hallelujah. So sometimes we need to understand these principles. What you are running away from, God is trying to shape you to give you authority over that thing. Hallelujah. I remember one, one um, lady that normally, a, well, an elderly woman that normally comes to our church. And, you know, one day she was talking and said, Pastor, I want you to pray. I said, pray about what? She said, oh, my son is stranded in one country. And I said, well, what is the problem? He said, it's money. I just laughed. I didn't know when I started laughing. And the woman was looking at me like, what is wrong with you? I said, pray, you're laughing. But the spirit in me is saying, that is the list of the things God can do for you. I said, is that all? Mommy, go. God, is that one? I thought it was something heavy. <laughs> the God I serve, that's the list of his problem. Hallelujah. And I'm proud to say that. Hallelujah. So when you endure hardship with faith and perseverance, there is greatness. It deepens your character. It makes you go through things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you will be spiritually matured and great in the eyes of God. He said, Jesus Christ learned obedience by the things he suffered. He learned obedience. He learned to obey God by the things he went through. Hallelujah. May God help you. May God help me. So paying the price for greatness, I will conclude. In God's kingdom, requires sacrifice, hard work, humility, obedience, and perseverance through trials. So we must continue to surrender to God's will. Be willing to pay the price for greatness. Be committed and dedicated to this work with God. Because every time you embrace the call to greatness, it's never a path that has no challenge. Challenges will always come. No, uh, challenges will always come. Challenges will always come. Whenever the general is speaking to the ministers, he tells us some things. And he said when he left his job, big house, boy scotters, everything, he left all that lecturing, being, being paid salary, and he went, he moved into a room and a parlor with four children to become general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Now, in anyone's natural mind, nobody would want to do that. Hallelujah. He said, they went through us, he will be telling his children, they will go and get okra, they will cut the okra big. They will call it okra meat. Today, today we are having okra meat. They will cook a chunk so that they can at least be feeling something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nobody knows all those stories. Hallelujah. I've been in the church, this mission, since 1995. I've seen growth. I've seen things with my eyes. So when people talk, I just look at them. You don't know where we're coming from. Hallelujah. You don't know where we're coming from. And he can't lay claim. Even him, he knows and he says it. There are countries in this world that there's redeemed Christian Church of God and he has never been there. He traveled to one island. They just had a stop in the island. And he said, okay, what can we do? His son went to buy food or something. I saw his sign, redeem, here, in this island. <laughs> so they went to the place and said, who's the pastor? They said, and they now called the pastor out. And he came out. The pastor nearly fainted. Hallelujah. I said, that Sunday, nobody, everybody in that parish never expected it. And he did it out of, I don't even know you guys are here. <laughs> Paying the price for greatness. He paid it, if you don't know. He paid it. For over 30 years of his life, consistently 
was praying three hours, 12 to 3, 12 to 3, every day without fail. When it comes to do any festival of life in the UK, he will walk and pray and pray, do prayer work. Many times people don't know. There is a price. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not saying your own price has to be you become genuine of Asia. No. But even that thing you want to achieve, there's a price. You want to be great in this UK? There are things you need to battle. Hallelujah. You are first of all battling your own foundational issues. You now moved into an area. This area, what is responsible for keeping people poor in this area? You better address it. There's something called in prayer, in prayer terms, spiritual mapping. <laughs> Another day. Let's stand to our feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. The price for greatness. Paying the price for greatness. I want you to thank God because God has a promise of greatness for anyone that is willing to serve him. Let's thank him for that promise of greatness. The intention for us to be great, God already provided. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Everlasting Father, we bless you. We thank you because you have greatness inbuilt in each and every one of us. Thank you for the promise for us to be great. If we can submit to you, if we can do the necessary things that you require, thank you, Father, for the promise of greatness. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to declare and say, Father, make me great indeed. Ah, as Jabez prayed, Lord, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. Make me great indeed. In the name of Jesus, make me great indeed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, make me great indeed. In the name of Jesus, Father, make me great indeed. Me librado koshekete lebrada kato sekete lebranda. Jegele brando suke palabra de keto sekete lebranda kashata. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to pray, Father, help me pay whatever price it is for me to be great and to remain great. Go ahead and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever price you want me to pay, Lord God Almighty, to be great and to remain great in you, Father, help me pay the price. Me kumpe le brado shekete le brada kasoto le gede. Rako shata ya kata le brade kese kete le brado kosete. Marako shata la brande kete keso koto le brade kese te. Rako shata la brade kese kete le branda kata yada. Rako shete le brade keto se kete le gede bede bede. Robo ko shekete le brade keso koto le brado kose koto le brado kose kete. Yele katu sakatalagada. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to pray that God, the discipline and the sacrifice required to achieve your will. God, help me to pay it. Help me to be disciplined. Help me to pay the necessary discipline. Help me to encounter and do the necessary sacrificial things in my life. Oh God, to fulfill your will in Christ Jesus. To fulfill your will in Christ Jesus. Father, I'm praying that you will empower me in the name of Jesus with that discipline and that sacrifice needed to achieve your will in my in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that will of mine, that will of yours for my life. Me kumbra de sheke tele brada kasoko tole gedebe. Jada la brada kasoko tole brade kese kete yegede. Ropo ko sheke tele brada kaseke tele gedebe legede. In Jesus' name. We pray, I want you to pray that the power of darkness that is militating against the greatness of your life, Lord, expose them to you. Expose them today. Expose them today. Every power of darkness uh, that is militating against your greatness in my life, that is fighting against your greatness in my life, Father, let him be exposed in the name of Jesus. Let them be exposed. 
Sheketele le brada kaso koto le brada ke sekete le gede belo koto. Jala brada kaso te le brada ke sekete le brada ke sekete. Rombo shata ye gede belo brada ke tu kusaka taya gada. Mali brada zuzza soke le brada shete. La gede 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 le brada sonte le bale ke te bede. Rombo shete ba kumpa la gede bede. Rombo shete ke te le gede belo gede. Roboko shekete yege de belekete. Oh Jesus, makanta le branda kata yaga da balibre de ke sekete ye. Oh God, malibra do satala gada bada. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to pray the covenant that that darkness has enabled over my life to keep me limited. Father, let that covenant be destroyed. Go ahead and begin to pray. The covenant of darkness that has limited me from being who God wants me to be. Lord, let that covenant be destroyed today. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to up the temple. Every voice speaking against greatness in your life. Let them be silenced and condemned. In the name of Jesus. Every voice of the enemy speaking against the plans of God over my life. Speaking against the plan of greatness of God in my life. God, let them be silenced. Let them be condemned. Every such voice saying you can never become it. Saying you can never do it. Every voice of negativity. Let them be silenced and condemned today. In the name of Jesus. Every voice that is telling me that nobody in my father's house has done it. Every voice that is saying in this land. You cannot become anything because you are of this color. Oh, because you don't speak like them. Ayelege do belegede. Me go palaga de belegede bede. Ajalaga da ba. Me gombalaka telegede. Mara kopelege du shatalagada. Mara kopala brada kaso koto le brade ke sekete. Jegede bede 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 bede. Jesus, let them be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are going to pray that by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Lord, teach me what I must do to be great. <laughs> by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, everything I need to do to be great, the Comforter has come so that he would teach us all things. That's what the Bible says. By the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, everything I need to do, by your inspiration, Holy Spirit, begin to teach me. Ikulakata zentuli gede bita la brada kaso tele brada kaya zosa tele gede bede la parake shataya anderi na kumpa la branda kataya. By the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, me kumpa la brada kese tele gede bele. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to pray. Lastly, begin to declare and decree over your life that the full plan of God for greatness will come to pass in my life. Make that confession boldly that the full plan of God, the greatness of God over my life will come to pass. England here, Scotland here, Wales here, Northern Ireland here, the whole of the United Kingdom, hear the word of the Lord over my life. What God has planned for me will come to pass. The greatness of God over my life will come to pass. The greatness of God over my wife and children will come to pass. I speak to this land in the name that is above every other name. Hear the word of the Lord England. Hear the word of the Lord Wales. Hear the word of the Lord Scotland. Hear the word of the Lord London Ireland. That in the name of Jesus, 
the family of the Ajayis will be great. Ikalagodo Belegede. By the authority of the living God, I decree such now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, we pray. Begin to thank him.